Today, we take time to honor the memory of one of our founders, John Stott, who would have been 100 years old on 27 April 2021. Stott, or Uncle John, as we call him in the Lausanne movement, had his first ministry connection with Billy Graham, our other founder, in 1955, when Billy was invited to lead a mission to Cambridge University. About 20 years after their friendship began, uh, Billy perceived the need for a global Congress to reframe Christian mission in a world of political, economic, intellectual, and religious upheaval. He believed this could only happen if leaders from around the world gathered to unite in the common task of the total evangelization of the world. That led to the first International Congress on World Evangelization held in July 1974, uh, today known to us as Lausanne One. And Billy hoped that this Congress would produce a biblical declaration on the importance of world evangelization. And it did, the Lausanne Covenant, with John Stott as its chief architect. This, of course, laid the foundation uh, not only for the global movement we have today, but in many ways also for modern evangelicalism in its theology and its mission. The Lausanne Covenant is used by more evangelical churches, schools, and organizations as their statement of faith and mission than any other in the world today. Both Billy and Uncle John in their mission and also in their friendship modeled what they described as the spirit of Lausanne, characterized by humility, friendship, study, prayer, partnership, and hope. And Uncle John's model of friendship really continues to shape the way we make connections today. Friendships across the globe of reflective practitioners who are as relationally warm-hearted as they are passionately biblical. What Charles Spurgeon said of John Bunyan could very appropriately be said of Uncle John, prick him anywhere and you will find that his blood is bibline. The very essence of the Bible flows from him. He cannot speak without quoting a text, for his soul is full of the word of God. The influence of the Bible in Stott's life was the very reason he was able to be a blessed influence on so many lives around the world. John Stott was ranked among Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World before he went to be with the Lord in 2011. And I was so blessed to have had Uncle John's influence in my life as well, not only through his books and sermons, but also in two opportunities I had to share lunch with Uncle John. And during those times, I saw a man of incredible biblical insight gentleness, humility, kindness, and love for both his creator and creation. He shared with me his seed thoughts for a future book on what we can learn about faith from looking at birds, one of his favorite hobbies. Only God knew that years later, I would be leading the global movement that Uncle John helped to launch how I wish I could have just one more lunch together to ask him a hundred questions about Lausanne. Uh, John Stott wasn't a mission strategist, but his influence on the Lausanne movement is incalculable. Chris Wright, Stott's successor at Langham and Lausanne's former theology working group chair, challenged us all at Cape Town 2010 to be his leaders, H-I-S, leaders of humility, integrity, and simplicity. And that not only describes so well the kind of leader John Stott was, it also represents what he might say is the very best mission strategy. 
In Uncle John's last sermon, he said that the greatest threat to our ministry, our mission, is us. And I think he would also say that one of the great opportunities for effective global mission is God-empowered, God-honoring, God-humbled servants. And so we embrace that strategy as a global movement seeking God's blessed provision of Christ-like leaders for every church and for every sector of society. I thank the Lord for Uncle John Stott, for his influence upon Lausanne, upon my life, and upon the global church.